So we got some new information on Starfield that people might not expect. You might be wondering, how could we possibly have even more new information past the Starfield Direct? Well, this report comes from someone who had hands-on experience with the game and gets me all the more excited to play it for myself. And what is up guys, Inch from the Denmen here, and today I want to go over some new information we have regarding Bethesda's next AAA game, Starfield. There is certainly a lot to talk about, so if you are excited, make sure you hit that like button and comment what your favorite thing was about the Direct. With that being said though, we have a lot to go over, so kick back, strap into your seat, and let's blast off into today's video. In the aftermath of the highly anticipated Starfield Direct, where Bethesda Game Studios unveiled their upcoming space epic, one significant aspect seemed to be overlooked was IGN's exclusive one-hour gameplay session with the game. Ryan McCaffrey, an editor at IGN, had the opportunity to play Starfield extensively and share his thoughts on the game. Despite the absolute magnitude of this opportunity, McCaffrey's gameplay impressions haven't gained as much attention as they really deserve. One of the main takeaways from McCaffrey's gameplay session was his emphasis on the immense scope portrayed in the Starfield Direct and how it was indeed reflected in the gameplay. McCaffrey stated that the scope of Starfield is on a grand scale comparable to that of the vastness of the No Man's Sky universe. However, unlike No Man's Sky, which primarily focused on exploration and resource gathering, Starfield combines these mechanics with the fully fleshed out Bethesda RPG experience. McCaffrey then goes on to note that Starfield offers players a compelling and interconnected story, meaningful choices and consequences, and a sense of exploration that extends far beyond simple discovery. During the gameplay session, it was confirmed that Starfield is primarily a single player experience, with no multiplayer or co-op features. Even though we kinda already knew this, McCaffrey also mentions that Bethesda has designed the game in a way that players may never feel compelled to complete the main story. Instead, they can immerse themselves in various other activities such as outpost building, ship customization, and engaging in dynamic faction interactions. With that being said though, the main storyline may take a backseat to these other engaging side pursuits and players can choose to prioritize what interests them the most, allowing for a truly player-driven experience. McCaffrey's account of ship-to-ship -ship interactions was particularly exciting. He described the various options available to players, including hailing other ships for friendly communication or resorting to more aggressive methods such as boarding. Starfield seems to be incorporating a lot of these elements of space piracy and smuggling, providing players with opportunities to engage in these activities and carve their own path in the game's universe. I will say though, the ability to interact with other ships in such dynamic ways add an extra layer of immersion and agency to the gameplay experience. I'd say one of the biggest highlights of McCaffrey's gameplay session was his visit to New Atlantis, a city that exuded a fusion of Mass Effect and Oblivion vibes. This sprawling hub of activity impressed McCaffrey with its numerous NPCs, districts, and a subway-like system connecting them all. He speculated that players could easily spend dozens of hours exploring this city alone, as it seems to be a bustling center of commerce, culture, and intrigue. McCaffrey further revealed that New Atlantis is Bethesda's largest city ever, boasting a multitude of quests that surpass the quest count of a Vex city for Morrowind. I'd say it's a very notable achievement in itself. In addition to the gameplay session, other intriguing details emerged from the footage showcased during the Starfield Direct and observations made by the gaming community. Starfield seems to incorporate psionics or magical powers for the player character, possibly connecting to an artifact seen in the trailer. The HUD in the game also appears to include a new menu section, which could be related to these magical abilities. This blending of sci-fi and fantasy elements adds an extra layer of depth and variety to the gameplay experience, providing players with unique ways to approach challenges and interact with the game world. However, some concerns were raised during the gameplay session, particularly regarding the looting of enemy armor. McCaffrey mentioned that it wasn't clear whether certain conditions needed to be met or if the shots were filmed on different builds of the game. While this uncertainty may cause a bit of unease among fans, it's important to note that the gameplay session represented a work in progress build and Bethesda Game Studios has a proven track record of addressing and improving upon such issues before release. Another noteworthy aspect highlighted during the Starfield Direct event was the depiction of Earth in the gameplay footage. The shot showcased desolation and sand-covered landscapes, suggesting a significant backstory waiting to be uncovered by the players. The inclusion of Earth as a location in the game's universe adds an interesting layer of familiarity and mystery, raising questions about what led to its state and how it connects to the larger narrative of Starfield. I'd say exploring and unraveling the secrets of Earth will undoubtedly be an intriguing aspect of the gameplay experience. In terms of technical specifications, McCaffrey confirmed that Starfield's minimum requirement includes the use of an SSD. This places Starfield among the first releases to necessitate this feature, highlighting the game's ambition and its potential for pushing the boundaries of current gaming hardware. 
The requirement for an SSD hints at the game's vast open world, seamless exploration, and the need for quick loading times, ensuring a smooth and immersive experience for players. Overall, McCaffrey's gameplay impressions provide the community with promising insights into the depth, versatility, and immersive nature of Starfield. The game seems poised to offer an expansive and captivating universe for players to explore, filled with meaningful choices, engaging activities, and a rich, interconnected narrative. While the gameplay session showcased a work-in-progress build, it still managed to generate a great deal of anticipation and excitement within the gaming community. On top of the gameplay we heard about, we also got an interview between IGN and Todd Howard as well. During the interview, he recently provided insights into the performance of Starfield on consoles. He mentioned that the game aims for vast open worlds with dynamic details, offering players a fully immersive experience. The resolution will be 4K on the Xbox Series X and 1440p on the Xbox Series S. To ensure fidelity and consistency, the game will run at a lock 30 frames per second on consoles. While Todd Howard's preference is for a visually stunning game at a lower FPS, this decision ultimately eliminates player choice regarding frame rate and visual quality. The lack of options for players to customize their experience is disappointing to me. Many modern games provide options for players to adjust these settings, so it's unfortunate that Starfield being a flagship title for Xbox doesn't offer this flexibility. It's important to remember that frame rate preferences are subjective. Some players may be content with 30 FPS, while others prefer a smoother experience at 60 FPS or higher. This difference in opinion doesn't make one person right and the other wrong. It's simply a matter of preference. Nevertheless, the fact that Starfield is locked at 30 FPS on consoles won't ruin the game for me. However, I believe it would have been better if players had the freedom to choose their preferred frame rate. The discussion surrounding this topic online has been intense with differing opinions on what constitutes an ideal frame rate. I also want to say that we did get confirmation that there will be more DLC after the game was released in its first DLC of Shattered Space. I'm assuming it's going to be in a similar vein to how Fallout 4 approaches post-launch content. You see, Bethesda has a history of providing expansion level content like Far Harbor and Nuka World for their games as well as smaller feature focused DLCs like Automatron and Workshop Packs. This news definitely excites me because it suggests that Starfield's rich world may have had some ideas or content that couldn't be fully implemented in the base game. These different DLCs could be the perfect opportunity to explore those cut concepts. The possibilities for Starfield's DLC are honestly endless. Players could potentially see DLCs that introduce new ship parts, customization mechanics, or even new cities on barren planets. Additionally, skin packs have already been confirmed, including a pre-order bonus skin pack and a more comprehensive premium edition that includes the first story expansion. While there is no season pass available at the moment, the premium edition, priced $30 higher, offers early access to the game. Overall, the prospect of Starfield DLC is exciting to me as it promises to expand upon the game's universe and provide players with additional content and customization options to enhance their experience. This is just the start of all of the latest news I assume we will be getting. I mean, we are just over two months away from playing it for ourselves, so I'm sure they're going to ramp things up to get players excited for Starfield. Who knows though, maybe this interview and the Direct are the last things Bethesda is going to do before we can play it for ourselves. Either way, make sure you guys stay tuned on all of the latest information and get ready for Bethesda's next AAA title, Starfield. But that is all for me now though guys, if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe, comment any videos you want to see in the future and I'll see you all next time!